Kitchen, The Rancher's Homestead. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a cooking project for you. Actually, it's a cooking canning project for you. In the winter months, I love to get ready-made meals on my shelf. Actually, my pressure canner works overtime during the winter months just because this is the time where you can get broths, beans, ready-made meals, all the things that need to be pressure canned you can get those on your shelf now when you don't have an abundance of fresh produce coming in from the garden that you need to put up. So this is the perfect time to do it. I have my Denali canning pressure canner here and I am going to get some white chicken chili canned in quart size jars and on my shelf so that we can have a quick meal whenever we're ready. Let's get started. Yeah. And I have a pot with several inches of water and I'm gonna go ahead and put in two cups of navy beans. These are just white navy beans. You can also use northern beans or cannel cannellini beans. I think that's how you say it. So any of those beans work. I have navy beans here that I buy in bulk, so I'm gonna use that. Now I've put my two and a half cups of beans into my pot and I there is several inches of water over it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on to my stove top let it come to a boil then i will reduce the heat to a simmer let it simmer for about five minutes turn it off and place the lid on once my lid is on and my stove top is off my beans have cooked for 30 minutes i will let them sit there while i get the rest of my food prepped and ready to go i like to let them sit for at least an hour um, that really breaks down the phytic acid in the beans and helps them easier to, to digest so um, that is our first step and we'll let these beans get cooking and then we'll move on to the next. Okay, it's been an hour and my beans have soaked. I'm gonna go ahead and take them and drain the beans with a colander. And just set them aside for a second. I have all of my jars washed over there and nice and clean with warm soapy water. And I'm gonna can this in quart size jars. I like the wide mouth um, quart size jars because it makes the product easy to come out when you're ready to use it. I have several inches of water here in my canner waiting for my jars to come in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get the chili made up. So in order to do that, you're gonna go ahead and get a large stock pot and turn it onto medium heat. I'm going to put about a tablespoon of avocado oil into my pot and I have six cups of diced chicken in here. Some of this is chicken tender, some of it is chicken breast and I'm going to add it to my pot to start to cook. I'm going to go ahead and cook this chicken for about 10 minutes here in the pot, stirring frequently so that it does not stick to the bottom of my pot. If I need to add a little bit of oil, I will. Now that this has been cooking for about 10 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a medium onion that I have diced up here and five cloves of garlic minced. And I'm gonna add that to my pot with the chicken. I'm also going to add a fourth a cup of cumin, one teaspoon of cayenne pepper, You can reduce that if you don't want it to be spicy. Um, I don't find that it's very spicy with all the other stuff that's added to it. One tablespoon of oregano. And then a cup of canned mild green chilies. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give this all a stir. and let it cook for an additional five minutes. It's okay if your chicken's not cooked all the way through, it'll cook in the canner. Okay, so it's done cooking the additional five minutes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add in eight cups of broth. This is my homemade bone broth. And two cups of water. You can actually add in 10 total cups of broth and not the water, um, whatever works for you. I'm gonna give it a stir and then I'm gonna go ahead and add in my beans that I had drained earlier. Give this a stir 
and I'm going to let it cook and simmer for an additional five minutes. Then we'll be ready to fill all of our nice clean jars. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and fill all of my jars. This is going to fill about six quarts. And I'm going to go ahead and do the solids first. Um, this is just so that you don't get too much in one jar and there's seepage. So I'll do about three fourths of the way of the jar with the mixture and go all the way around and do that. Then I will top off the rest of the jar with the broth and I will leave a really generous one inch headspace. I'm going to go ahead and go through and fill it the rest of the way with broth. There's still some solids in this broth, but um, most of it's in the jar already. And I'm going to give it a really generous one inch headspace. That means that it's almost an inch and a quarter. These beans are still going to expand quite a bit, so you want to give them plenty of space to do that. I say headspace, what I mean is you're going to leave one inches until the brim of the jar with no liquid or food in it. So it gives it a real nice space with nothing filled in it. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and take the back of a tool here and run it down the inside of the jars a couple times. You just want to get out any air pockets. Then I can go through and test my headspace and make sure that I'm at the right level. If it's changed at all, you can just go ahead and add, if you have a little bit more broth, you can add broth or you can do a little bit of water. I didn't have any broth left, so I'm just doing water. Okay, now I'm gonna take a nice clean dish towel that I have wet here. You can also dip it in white vinegar if there's a lot of food particles and it's kind of sticky. That helps get the grime off, but you want to make sure that each of your jars is very, very clean and there is nothing on the rim or you won't get a proper seal. Now I'll take my finger and I just kind of run around the rims of my jar feeling for any nicks. If I feel a nick at all, then I will change out the jar because that means that it could crack in the process or it won't have a proper seal. Now I'll take my Denali canning lids here, and these are my wide mouth lids, and I'll cap each of my jars. And I will take my Denali canning rings, and I will screw them down fingertip tight. That just means as soon as you hit resistance, go ahead and stop. You don't want to crank them down too, too tight, or you can get your lids to bow while they're in the canner. Now it is time to get these into the canner. So I am going to stick them all in, making sure that they have space in between each jar. You don't want them to be clanking together. And it should fit six quart size jars here, nice and snug. You don't want your water to be up above the rim of the jar, completely submerged. You just want it to be enough that it's not going to boil out when it is canning. Now that all of my jars are in, I'm gonna go ahead and pop my lid on, slide it into place. My vent is covered, the vent stem is covered with the weight already, I never take that off. There's an automatic vent right here in the handle, so now at this point I can turn my stove on to about medium and it'll vent itself, seal itself off, and then it'll begin to build pressure. Once you have reached the appropriate pressure for your elevation, then this weight right here will start to hum and jiggle and rock back and forth. That's when you start your timer for the processing time. My quart size jars here are going to process in this canner once it has reached pressure 
for one hour and 30 minutes. If you were doing pint sized jars, then you would do it for one hour and 15 minutes. Okay, the timer has gone off, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn my stove top off, and I'm just gonna let this come down to zero. So I'm not gonna do anything else um, at this point. It's gonna go all the way down to zero, and then I'm gonna wait a minimum of 20 minutes after it's at zero before I even touch it. Honestly, the longer it sits, the better. Okay, it has been well over 20 minutes. It's actually been quite a few hours, and as you can see, it just slides right off. So really, the longer it sits, the better, and it really just comes right off. Now you're gonna go ahead and take out all of your jars very carefully and put them on a clean dish towel here so that they can sit undisturbed for at least 12 hours. You want them to cool down completely on their own. After they have cooled down completely, you can make sure that they all seal properly and then remove your rings and wipe them down and label them to get them on your shelf to be used whenever you need them. I hope that this video was helpful in getting you a, a new meal to put onto your shelf. Make sure to like and subscribe to the video. I send out one new video every single week here on YouTube. Jump on over to the blog and become an email subscriber. I send out an email a week over there as well with different recipes and canning recipes and stuff like that. So I hope this video was helpful and we'll see you next time. Take care.